Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. On today's episode, we're going to talk about pet names for boas. So what do I think of pet names for boas and do I name my boas? How can you go about finding a pet name for your boa? And finally, I'm going to give you the opportunity to name this beautiful anorithristic Paraguana Peninsula boa. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So to start with, one of the most common questions I get is, do I name my boas? And by name, I mean like a pet name, not an ID number or something like that. Um, so I'll say, first of all, I don't name the vast majority of my boas. Um, I have a few that I've named, but you know, most of them just get a number. And I use this system where each different type of locality boa has an abbreviation. And then I number them M for male, F for female, one, two, three, four, five, etc. So it's a relatively simple naming system. For example, for my Suriname red tails, I just abbreviate that S, S for Suriname, and SF2 would be the second female Suriname red tail. Another example for my Tarahumara boas, I just label them T. So my Tarahumara first male would be TM1, my third male would be TM3, etc. And I just label them by when they're added. So, you know, the first animal that I acquire gets the number one, the second gets the number two, etc. And so, right now, really the only way that I get new animals at this point in my breeding is by my holdbacks. So, the holdbacks just get a number. Um, I don't even know what number I'm up to. I'm up to like 10 or 11 for some of my different localities. I've got so many holdbacks. Um, but I, I label them with these numbers. And then, if I ever sell one of them, I don't reuse the number. So if I sold the third Suriname male, that number would just no longer be in the collection. I wouldn't label another animal SM3. Uh, it would just be, you know, whatever number it is. So it's a little, maybe not the most exciting, but it's easy. It's easy to keep track of. It's practical and it works for me. That being said, there are a few boas that I do give pet names to. Sometimes I just have an extra special animal who kind of, you know, strikes me on a personal level and I come up with a name for that animal. And my, probably my most famous was Prometheus, who was the founder of what I call the Prometheus line. This is actually one of his offspring. And so I just like the name Prometheus. I know a lot of people name their reptiles after mythological characters, you know, which Prometheus is. Prometheus is the Greek god who stole fire from the gods and gave it to uh, humanity. Um, but I just liked the name and I thought it was fitting for that particular animal. And thus I established the Prometheus line, which is known for their really long red tails and their high contrast and just really cool wild look. You know, one of my favorite uh, Suriname boas, definitely. This guy is actually, um, I refer to this guy just simply as Prometheus Jr. You know, because he's probably my favorite holdback that was born from Prometheus. Not the most original name, but I guess it, you know, does the job. This is another boa that I've given a pet name to. This guy is actually a Coupes Pastel Colombian boa, and his pet name is Pablo Escoboa. And this guy actually I acquired from a good friend of mine who got out of boas. This friend of mine was into the boas and he had quite a few of them. He would name each one with an individual pet name and each one had to begin with the letter P. So it was quite unusual. Uh, I think he was, uh, you know, getting to the point where he was about running out of P names since he had so many boas named with P. This guy was just Pablo when I got him. But I thought, you know, it would be funny to just add the last name Escoboa as a pun in reference to the infamous Colombian drug lord. Um, unfortunately, this guy's in shed right now, so his colors are a little dull. A real nice boa, real nice colorful animal. You know, kind of like a normal boa, but just more colorful, the Coupes Pastel line. And I actually had this guy and his, my female, paired up this year in a breeding trial. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, they didn't breed. But maybe I'll give them another go next year and hopefully we'll produce some uh, Coupes Pastel Colombians in 2022. One other animal that I named is this guy. This is a Suriname red tail boa. This is the number one holdback from my 2014 litter. And this guy I named Picasso after the artist because this guy is a work of art. You know, he's uh, may well be the nicest Suriname red tail that I've ever produced. 
And this guy is definitely one of my favorite boas. He really stood out from the litter as soon as he was, as he was born. He just had this really clean background and these beautiful uh, peak saddles. You know, perfect size and shape and symmetry. Um, and he's just been a really great boa. You know, real mellow, nice to handle. Um, he's also a proven breeder. You know, he bred for me first last year and produced my 2020 Suriname litter. And I paired him up again this year with a different female who's now gravid. So fingers crossed that we should have some more babies from this guy on the ground in another couple months. But just a great animal, great Suriname boa. Um, and I think he definitely deserves the title of Picasso, the work of art of a boa. So those were a few of my animals with names. And I'm not against naming snakes if you want to do that. I just don't really have the time or energy to come up with a name for each and every one of my snakes. Um, you know, for me, it's kind of like keeping tropical fish. Most people have a fish tank they don't name each fish. Maybe a few of the more notable fish they might name, but not the whole tank. And that's kind of how I am with the boas. Um, but you know, that being said, if you do want to name your boa, go for it. And I've noticed that there are several themes when it comes to naming a boa and naming pretty much any pet. Um, the first is mythological characters. It's very common for people to name their boas after either Greek, Roman, or even ancient Egyptian or Norse gods, things like that. Um, in fact, as I mentioned, my animal Prometheus was named after a Greek mythological character. Actually, there's quite a few different websites you can look up names, not just for uh, snakes, but for all pets. But I did look up some snake names at a few websites, just wrote down some of the more notable ones. And so in the first category, in the mythological characters, um, apparently the most common and popular snake name for 2021 is Asmodeus, A-S-M-O-D-E-U-S, -E which is some kind of a mythological character. But other really common ones after mythological characters are Medusa, Athena, Apollo, and you know numerous other names. Another common type of name for boas and other snakes is the humor category. And I think my Coupes Pastel Colombian boa, Pablo Escoboa I just showed you falls into the humor category. But some other examples are the very common and very much used Julius Squeezer, uh, William Snake Spear, and of course Monty Python, more appropriate for a Burmese or ball python. Um, Moving on, you know, we have categories of names that pretty much any pet could be named by. We have the cute category, names like Fluffy, Biscuit, Cuddles, Bubbles, etc. A lot of people name their snakes after the color of the snake, for example, Onyx, Mango, or Goldie. And then finally, we have the cool or hip category, just kind of modern, futuristic sounding names like Danger, Xena, Rex, Zoe, and Zeke. So a lot of names out there. You know, come up with one original. You might want to think about these different categories. So finally, in the last part of the video, I just wanted to discuss the names for this guy. This is my anerythristic Paragu Paraguana Peninsula male boa. And so this guy, as I said before, is kind of like the mascot for the Brian Boas YouTube channel. And a few videos ago, I asked a question of you guys if you would suggest names for this guy since he's the mascot. He should have a name. I actually got this guy from the same guy that I got the Coupes Pastel uh, Boa, uh, Pablo Escoboa. And this guy actually had the name Pekka, P-E-C-C-A. I'm not sure how he came up with that. Maybe he was just running out of P names, as I said, because every one of his snakes had to be named with a P name. But anyway, I think it's, you know, he should definitely get a new name. And thank you guys who gave suggestions. There were quite a few suggestions. So I narrowed it down to my five favorites. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these up in a poll. You can go to the community section of the Brian Boas YouTube channel and you can vote on your favorites. So this, the polling will go up right now. You can go vote. And whoever, whichever one of these names gets the most votes will be the new name for this guy. And so here are the top five picks. Okay, so the first is Anubis, A-N-U-B-I-S, Anubis. So this is uh, some kind of an Egyptian mythological name, but it has kind of a cool ring to it. Next, we have silver, like the color silver, but it's really appropriate because this guy has such a beautiful silvery color to him. 
I think, you know, silver is a really good name. You know, he's also worth his weight in silver, or probably worth his weight in gold, actually. So that's the second choice. The third choice is Vinny. And, you know, Vinny is cool. It's, it's sometimes cool to name a pet with a human name. Uh, Vinny has kind of a tough guy ring to it, which I think fits this guy. And then also this guy was bred by the breeder Vin Russo of, of Cutting Edge Herps. So Vinny, I think, is a cool and appropriate name. The fourth choice is Morpheus. You know, after the character from the uh, Matrix movie franchise. And I think Morpheus is cool. It has a cool sound to it. Um, also, this guy is kind of like a morph because he is a variant form of the Paraguana Peninsula boa with the anorithristic colors. Although he's a locality specific animal, and he's not really a morph in the traditional sense of what people think of as morphs, but he's basically a locality specific morph. So Morpheus is a cool name. And then finally, the uh, last choice is mascot. So I guess this is kind of the most uh, simple because he is the mascot, so why not just call him mascot? So those are the five choices. Hopefully one or more of them, you know, uh, sounds good to you, but go ahead, go vote in the community section. And in a future episode, I'll announce the name of the Brian Boas uh, channel mascot, this beautiful anorithristic Paraguana Peninsula Boa. So I hope this video was useful and somewhat entertaining and gave you uh, some things to think about when you're thinking of a name for your boa. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.